Am I the a-hole for pretending not to recognize my parents when they tried to reconnect? I was raised mostly by my uncle and aunt. My older sister developed a serious illness when I was six, and my parents decided that they couldn't care for both of us, I guess, so they kind of unceremoniously dumped me at my grandparents, and my uncle took me in. Like, didn't even explain to me what was going on. Just, you're going to go visit Grand for a while, and never picked me back up. My grandparents and uncle explained it later and they were pretty livid at my parents. I've seen my parents maybe five times since then, and not at all for the last nine years. I decided to stop having contact with them when I was 12 and since I was the only one reaching out, all communication broke down. It turned out okay though. I love my aunt and uncle, and it turns out they can't have kids so they've always said I'm a miracle kid. I was just misrouted by the stork at first. I was formally adopted by them when I turned 18. I wish it had been earlier, but there were some red tape things that would have made that really expensive and difficult. I'm 21 now. My sister passed away between Thanksgiving and Christmas and I made a trip back from school for the funeral. But I stayed in the back and left before my bio parents could talk to me. They called my uncle to try to talk to me, but I said I didn't want to, so he told them that I wasn't available at the moment. They finally caught up to me over Christmas when I went to midnight mass with my gran and approached me and tried to give me a hug. I did recognize them, but I pretended not to and just backed off and said, Sorry, do I know you? They said, Where are your parents? And I said, My parents are at home and went and sat down with my gran. They sat behind us and I could just feel the stare. And on the way out, they were like, You really don't recognize us? And I said, Oh, are you my dad's brother? I think I remember you from when I was little. My grand thinks they deserve it trying to come back to me like nothing happened, but they wrote me a long letter about how hurt they are, and how I should understand that they were trying to do the right thing, and how they'll always be my parents and I can't change that. Other family members think I was too harsh as they are grieving, but I don't think they should get a pass, just because they remembered me now that my sister is gone. Now for the top comments. Not the whole. Are you my dad's brother? Was pure class. And it's technically correct with the adoption. Not the a-hole. And I said, oh, are you my dad's brother? I think I remember you from when I was little. This was petty AF, but so much deserved. And I'm applauding you all the way for it. I'm glad that you ended up with parents who love and cherish you. Also, you were adopted, so they aren't your parents. Notice how in their letter they only focused on themselves. How hurt they were. Then, they had the audacity to tell you how you should be and feel. These people are garbage, and deserve to know and be told repeatedly that they're garbage. Not they whole. Rinse and repeat. They left behind a six-year-old they never intended to continue racing. I can't imagine how much therapy Opie needed to get to the point he's at now. Not the a-hole. They'll always be my parents and I can't change that. But they could change that, and they did. They didn't act as parents for 15 years. The number of times that you saw them in that period can be counted on your fingers. There's no relationship there to salvage. Relationships are built in trust, and they broke that well and truly. Not the whole. You're my freaking hero. Most people would freeze in the moment, especially when already preoccupied with grief and sadness, and only think of the perfect line minutes, hours, or days later. But not you. You're a legend among us mortals. I'm so very, very sorry for the traumatic and heartbreaking experiences you went through. But somehow that path still led you to greatness. No pressure, OP, but I think you're going to save the world one day. Good on your parents for making it official. Otherwise, I would toss out the idea of adopting you myself. Next story. Would I be the a-hole for refusing a large cash gift on behalf of my children? My two kids are 15 female and 13 female. My dad very unceremoniously left our family when I turned 20. He wasn't a bad guy necessarily. To him, he fulfilled his obligation to raise me to adulthood and wanted to cut ties and live his own life because he became a father very young. It had 25 years since he left. He lived his dream with lots of travel. I know it shouldn't have affected me as much as it did since I was an adult, but it devastated my mom. And he promised he'd keep in touch with all of us but never did. Since then, I've only spoken to him four or five times and I haven't met him since. My mom has never spoken to him again. This was all in his end, though we tried to no avail. When I had kids of my own, we didn't pretend I didn't have a dad or he passed or anything like that. I was always forthright and told my daughters that he decided not to be a dad anymore, and it hurts grandma and me deeply. 
if my kids had any questions. I told them the truth with how it affected us, but also menial things like how he was, who he was, and so on. My kids have a generally negative view of him, and they came to their own conclusions given all the facts with no hyperbole or sugarcoating. He emailed me to talk on the phone last week, and he told me he's dying with stage 4 lung cancer. We talked a bit about him leaving, and he said he doesn't regret his decision because his life was taken from him. He said he respects that I turned into a well-adjusted adult, and he's proud that I've gotten so far even without him, but that he doesn't love me and has no intention of seeing me before he goes. He did say, however, that he is dividing his assets between a few close friends and wanted to leave $25,000 each to both of my kids. He was a penny pincher but still lived modestly. He only ever worked to maintain, never to grow, so I don't doubt this is a large chunk of his total assets. He said it's only right that they get this money because there is only grandchildren. I'm conflicted because accepting this money means, at least how my brain rationalizes it, that I forgive him or that it's okay or healthy to have lived how he did. I don't want my kids to get a lump sum and suddenly have a change of heart about him. I'm thinking of refusing the money on their behalf because it sets a bad example. My wife stands by my decision. But would I be the a-hole to my kids for taking this choice for them? They don't know about it, and my plan is to keep them in the dark about it. Possibly forever. You would be the a-hole. I don't want my kids to have a change of heart about him. You said it yourself. You want to preserve your kid's negative opinion of him. That's very selfish of you. You want to ensure he dies without ever having done one single nice thing for your kids. Out of spite, you're going to punish your kids because of being mad at your father. And, if your kids ever find out, you're the only one they'll be mad at. Sounds like a bad idea to me. Also, taking someone's money doesn't mean forgiving them. He doesn't ask for forgiveness and you're not giving it. He is just a dying man who is putting his affairs in order and your kids can benefit. The kicker is, Opie's tentative plan to never ever tell his kids about the decision he's making on their behalf. He wants to feel completely in control of his father's forgiveness, but he's too much of a coward to let his kids decide whether to forgive him. Pretty shameless in my opinion. This is an excellent point. He's all brutal honesty about someone else's actions, yet he doesn't want his kids to know what he does. Imagine these kids years from now, finding out they could have an extra $25,000 plus accrued interest to help them with college or trade school, and here their dad is thinking selfishly. Because they will find out. People always find out. If Opie is well-to-do enough that $25,000 is a day's worth of interest, sure. Opie can't deny that because the benefit to the kids would be negligible. If, however, $25,000 is the difference between them needing to take out student loans or having a down payment for a house, Opie would be a massive a-hole for denying his kids this opportunity out of spite. I don't think I'd be able to forgive my father for sabotaging my future for his ego and pride. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not inviting my sister on my trip to Disney World? I, female 33, am planning a trip to Disney World with my 9-year-old daughter. As a single mom, I've saved for this trip for years. My daughter adores all things Disney and want to give her at least one vacation that she can remember fondly. I scrimped and saved for this, and it's a long time coming, but the look on her face when I told her we're going to Disney made it worth it. My sister, female 28, and I were close before I had my daughter. My sister is aggressively child-free, to the point where she wouldn't even watch my daughter so I could shower because I have no obligation to provide free babysitting, which has caused a strain in our relationship. Even little things like Christmas gifts slash birthday presents she refuses to do, since she, my spawn, isn't her responsibility. Her words, not mine. I even had to take my daughter with me to the ER back in 2020 because my sister refused to watch my daughter when my appendix ruptured and I had exhausted all other options. I've been distancing myself from my sister since, but somehow she caught wind of the Disney trip. My sister is a self-proclaimed Disney addict. Ever since she started working a real job, she's been going on expensive trips to the parks. I even think she's an annual pass holder despite living in Chicago. Regardless, ever since she heard about the trip, she's been asking to go saying that it'll be a fun bonding experience for all us girls. I've been telling her no because she hates my daughter, and I don't want her to ruin the trip. My mom thinks this is my sister trying to extend an olive branch and I should take it, but I don't know. Am I the a-hole for not inviting my sister on this trip? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She just wants to go to Disney. 
she is not going to have fun following a nine-year-old's Disney trip, as opposed to her professional-level Disney planning and agenda. So she is going to be miserable and make the trip miserable for your daughter. This exactly. She's going to want to run the show and direct all your plans and not care at all what your daughter wants to do. Leave sister behind and enjoy this trip with your daughter. I'm an adult who loves Disneyland. I had a lot of fun going with my young nibblings and watching them enjoy the magic. But it was completely different from going with my adult friends. With little kids, you're stopping more often. You're probably not going on the more intense rides. They're going to get impatient in lines and shops. And they're going to tire out when a group of adults would be ready to keep going. But when you're at Disney with kids, the trip is about the kids. Like I said, I had a blast going to Disney with my nibblings, but that's because I deeply enjoy my nibblings as people, and my affection for them overruled the more frustrating moments. Opie's sister doesn't have that bond with her niece, so I don't know that she'd be willing to put aside her own idea of a fun Disney trip in favor of making the trip fun for Denise. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. This is a special trip for you and your daughter and your sister hasn't wanted any bonding time until now. If she wants to go to Disney, she can take herself. Again. Stand your ground, mama. You worked hard for this for you and your daughter. Don't let someone who hasn't cared until now bully you into giving in. Likewise, if sister really wants to bond and make changes, she can do it locally, not on your special trip. Not the a-hole. Hell no. Preserve the special experience for you and your daughter. She won't want to be seen with your spawn anyway. Imagine how negative she could get if you prioritize the things your daughter wants to do. Last story. Am I the a-hole for buying my daughter her own Nintendo Switch after her older step-siblings refused to let her play? My wife has a son 12 and a daughter 14. They're not biologically my kids. Our daughter 7 is, however. For Christmas, we bought them the Switch. To be clear, it was for all three and they opened it together. This was their first gaming console. All the games we purchased had multiplayer function. We also gave each kid their own controller. Christmas Day things were fine. They all played together for hours. The day after, life resumed and my wife flew out to her dad's first surgery. As I went to work each day, both older kids were to keep an eye out for the youngest during the remainder of Christmas break. I'd come home from work to find the two playing, while the youngest sat quietly, obviously upset though. I'd ask why isn't the youngest playing as well? I would get responses like, in a minute, or this level is too hard for her. Most of the time, they'd give me a bunch of hot air without a definite reason. Then one evening, a huge fight broke out after the two paused the game and walked away. The youngest determined it was finally her turn, but when they found her, all hell broke loose. I took the console away, and the next day I told them they could have it back when they agreed to let their sister play. Several days later, I come home and find the youngest in her room crying. They made her do all their chores. In return, she would be given 15 minutes to play the game. Only, they didn't hold up their end of the deal after she completed the chores. I discovered this wasn't an isolated incident. They have been bossing her around every day and using the console to manipulate her. I was livid. This was a gift intended for everyone. She shouldn't have to earn her time to play and then be given a ridiculous time restraint. I took the console away completely but realized later this wasn't fair for the youngest who did nothing wrong. So I decided to buy her a system instead, just for her. I saw this being the only fix to eliminate the problem. The older kids got their system back, and I explained their sister now has her own. Everyone seemed fine. Things in my opinion worked out great. That was until my wife returned home. The older kids told her how I've shown obvious favoritism for the youngest. They don't think it's fair the younger gets to have a console to herself and in her bedroom. Their console has been in the living room since Christmas morning. They argued they should each have their own console so they can have them in their separate rooms too. To be clear, the youngest needs her system in her room or it would defeat the purpose of buying another since the other kids use the living room TV. Even after explaining to my wife what had happened, she agreed it was a form of favoritism and that I should have made a rule all three play or not at all. Like as if they'd actually obey that rule when I wasn't home. Currently, they're barely speaking to me and said to fix things I should buy a third console. I'm kicking myself for buying the first one. Edited to add, I'm not sure why so many are baffled over the fact that the older kids were asked to keep an eye out for the youngest. That simply meant, as they know, call if there's a problem and I'll be right there. They were not expected or asked to do a single thing for their sibling, other than picking up the phone and calling me. Not day hole. Your stepchildren are bullying your daughter. You took action to rectify that. 
and did so in a very fair way. They wanted that console for themselves. Well, they got it, and now their younger sister has her own console. As for your wife, she is turning a blind eye to her children's bullying behavior, and her kids clearly have her number. They are manipulating her with their ridiculous claims of favoritism. If anyone is showing favoritism, it's her, when she chooses to excuse their bad behavior toward your daughter. The idea that you should have to reward your stepkids for their bullying by buying yet another console is absolutely ridiculous. Tell her to buy it herself if she really thinks they deserve to be rewarded for their bad behavior. I applaud you for standing up for your child and not allowing her to be bullied. I recommend family counseling because it sounds like this issue goes deeper than a console. Your wife does not want to see or admit to her kid's behavior. I'm confused why the wife is okay with her two older children bullying her youngest. I think the seven-year-old is a child of Opie and a wife, since he described her as our daughter. Not they whole. They have had no issue sharing with each other. So no, a third one should not be needed. They refused to share with your daughter, so yes, she does deserve her own. Exactly the two oldest can share just not with the youngest? They are definitely excluding her on purpose. If the two oldest had no issues sharing with each other before, they shouldn't have any issues sharing one switch now. Not they whole. 